Hello, and welcome to This Old Nerd. You're probably thinking, that doesn't look like This Old Nerd Eyes actor. And you're right, because I'm not. I'm contributing nerd, Rob Borghese. Nice to meet you all. You're probably also wondering, what am I doing in the kitchen? Well, the kitchen is where this problem occurred. My partner couldn't get online in the kitchen because the wireless signal was too weak here. The router is on the other end of the house and the signal just doesn't reach here. Now, I could go out and buy a better router that has a longer range, or I could move that router to a different place. But today, I'm gonna to try a different solution. I'm gonna take an old router and I'm gonna repurpose it into a wireless repeater. What's a wireless repeater, you ask? That's something that takes the wireless signal from the main router and just repeats it to give you twice the distance. Now, this seems like it's probably something complex. It's really not. All it involves is taking the original software off of the router and putting on a third-party software. Now, most people don't know that a router is actually much more technologically advanced than they think it is because of the software the company puts on it. The company limits the ability of the user to change the settings on this router to use it for things like wireless repeaters. But with this third-party software, you can unleash your router and use it to its full potential. Let's get started. All we need for this project is a computer hooked to the internet, an old router, and cable to hook the two together. Now, we're just gonna go to a website called DDWRT, find the software for this to change it from a normal router into a wireless repeater. So the first thing you got to do is figure out what the model number of your router is. This one says it's an E1000. We need more information than that. Flip it over. Look at the model number on the back. Here it says E1000. Sometimes you're going to have a V number after that model number. That's gonna imply that it's a different version. We need this information because when we go to the website, we need to look up the router based on the version. Some routers will have a version one that's supported while a version two or three is not supported. We need all that information before we go to the website. So here we are at the DDWRT site. The address is www.dd-wrt.com. We have a bunch of choices. What we're gonna be concerned about is the router database to look for your router and the wiki where you're going to get a lot of information. Now, we'll go into the router database. Now, everybody is going to be different at this point because it's based on what router you have. For us, we have the Linksys 1000. Zero routers found. Let's just type in Linksys. See what we get. Now you see that there's a ton of supported routers. Unfortunately, the E1000 is not in that list. Now, I've used www.ddwrt for a long time now, and what i found is just because it's not in the list doesn't mean that they don't have the software for it. The list is updated pretty much bi-monthly, but for those people who have a different router, let me go through the steps here. Let's say you have a Linksys WRT160N, and it's version 2.0. Now, you see that it is not supported. Usually if there's a no, it means they've tried and they just can't make it work. If it's not possible, it means there's something in the software that's keeping it from working. Yes is obvious. Yes, it does work and they have the correct software. And WEIP is work in progress, meaning they're working on it, which means they probably have some form working, but they don't really know if it's perfect or they haven't tested enough. They're just not ready for release. Now let's click on one of these that is working. Let's click on the 160N version 1. This router actually looks a lot like the E1000, which is why I chose it. Now you see that it is working, and we have a bunch of different files here. These files aren't really going to make much sense. What you really have to do, click here. Look in additional information, and you can go to the wiki. Now. The biggest steps in this is you need to follow instructions. If it tells you to do something, then you do it. You see these? See step one? Read the Peacock announcement? Listen to that. That has some of the pitfalls that other people have gone through and things you need to know how to do before you go for it. Like doing a hard reset and upgrade flashing info, backing up files, recommended builds. I mean, all of this. Just read through it. I know it'll take some time, but it'll save you a ton of issues in the future. So the Peacock announcement is general. This is for Broadcom routers, which probably everybody has. Um, so you don't have a big issue here. Now, if we go back to 
the last page, we see, okay, we read the Peacock announcement. Now what? This is the actual file you're going to be putting onto the router. You see here, perform a 30-30-30 reset. I'm going to go over that in a minute. The 30-30-30 reset is different than just pushing the reset or unplugging it. It's a special type of reset that kind of resets the internal components of the routers. So these are the instructions for the WRT150N and the WRT160NV1 instructions. Go to the user forum. Now, this is where users post their problems, their successes, things like that. Even if you have that link that I just showed you that has something in the wiki, still go to the forum and find all the information you can on your prospective router. Linksys E1000 now supported. This is from September. See? I like it when I'm right. So, here is the file. All right, the DDWRT file. All right, you're going to want to download this file. Well, I'm going to want to download this file. You only download it if you have this particular router. And I have to say, in the past, I've done this on six routers. They've all been Linksys. I'm sorry, I, ha I don't really have any other routers on me. Um, remember the old brick-style Linksys ones? Those work the best. That's what this was created originally on. And since then, it's moved on. Um, but I can safely say that I haven't had any problems with the Linksys. So I'd uh, be interested to hear from people out there whether they have many problems with everything else. But... That is definitely the case. Now, at this stage, I just want to mention, while you're going through this, you're probably not going to have internet service for a little while. Or you might if you're working on a separate computer. But if you have to disconnect your main router, remember, you don't have internet. So if you need to access this information, you might want to print it out or maybe print as a PDF or save the website, whatever you want to do. But in case you need to get to this station again, what I usually do is I print out the Peacock announcement and out the additional information page. So if this, you get one of these pages for your router, print this out. And then, I know it's long, print out the Peacock announcement. Because if you hit a problem and you don't have internet or whatnot, this will help. So we are downloading the file. Let's talk a little about the hard 30-30-30 reset. This is one of the most important parts of the whole operation because it gets this router ready to accept the new software. So it's not just pulling the plug out and counting to a certain number. It's not just pushing the reset button. It's both. What you need to do, find a pen, something to push the reset button, push that reset button, and count to 30. I don't care if you count. I don't care if you have a friend count. I don't care if you have a timer. Just make sure it's 30 seconds. All right, after 30 seconds, Continue holding the reset button while you pull out the power cord. Then another 30 seconds while holding the reset button. We never let it go. One, two, you get the idea. After 30 seconds, power cord goes back in, still holding that reset button for the last 30 seconds. So all told, you're holding that reset button for 90 seconds. Just to recap, 30 seconds, power in, reset button. 30 seconds, power out reset button. 30 seconds, power back in, reset button. That's going to clear the internal RAM and get this prepared to accept new information. So we've done the hard 30-30-30 reset on the router and for Linksys we navigate to 192.168.1.1 as told in the instructions. It's different for each company but it's something on that order. It'd be in the basic setup. If you can't find it, just go online and look for your type of router. Um, anyway, so we have navigated to the firmware upgrade page, which is under administration. And now we're going to choose the file which we want to upgrade to, which we saved to the desktop earlier. It's right here, the DDWRT. There's that. And start the upgrade. Now this might take a few minutes. Do, 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 do. Oh, copyright infringement. Can't do that. Also, copyright infringement, can't do that. We'll just sit in stunned silence while this is going. Slowly. Slowly. This show is brought to you by the This Old Nerd Store, powered by Amazon.com. Buy from the This Old Nerd Store, you get tech, we get a commission. It's win-win. So now we see upgrade is successful. When you get this screen, don't touch anything. Look at the router. Wait to have the lights on indicating that it's booted up again. You're going to need your power light and your wireless indicator light on at the same time. Okay, now you can push continue. And there we are. We're in the D 
ddwrt.com control panel. So this means the firmware has gotten there. You can see the firmware right here. Now, we are under the wireless and basic settings. Now, we want to change the wireless mode to repeater bridge. You saw that the other option was repeater or repeater bridge. A repeater bridge just means that this computer that's hooked to this router would also be able to access any network files. A repeater just accesses the internet signal. So just for more usefulness, repeater bridge is probably how you want to go. The wireless network mode, this needs to match whatever the main router is. The wireless network name, this is whatever the primary router's name is. So this is your main router's name. Mine is Borg. So we'll go with Borg. Wireless channel, you're going to want to keep on whatever is on your primary router. For me, it's auto. There you go. The rest of this, you really don't need to be too concerned with. Just make sure it's bridged and enable the SSID broadcast. Hit save. Okay, now in virtual interfaces, you're going to want to hit add, which for some reason on mine didn't come up. And this is going to be the name of the repeater. So make it different than the primary. I will go with underscore repeater after my name. Enable the SSID broadcast on this as well. AP isolation is disabled and network configuration is bridged and save. All right, now we're going to want to do our security. So this security for the physical interface, this needs to match the um, primary router. Make sure the uh, key matches as well. Then we are going to go to the virtual interface section and you're going to want pretty much the exact same settings. So basic setup tab, we're looking here. Connection type will be disabled. Set STP for disabled. Feel free to write a name if you feel like it. The IP address, change this to two. Your primary router is gonna be the one, so you don't wanna to hook to that. Mass should say the same. Gateway needs to be your primary router. So in our case, 192.168.1.1. Assign WAN port to switch. Okay, and that's it for this page. Save. Open setup, advanced routing, set outer wrap operating mode to router. Hit save. Open services, and we are going to DNS mask. Save. Open the security under the firewall. Uncheck all boxes. Accept filter multicast. Disable the AI firewall, apply settings, and now you just need to do a regular reboot of the router. Now, if you want to confirm those settings, you can go back to the router, but remember, now we've changed the number to two. There we are. Um, check our wireless. Here we are. And only Borg repeater. We can go and check everything else if you feel like it. But pretty much it's working. And the way to see that it's working right now, to make sure it's getting a signal, so you have your main router broadcasting right now, and you're connected hardline to this router. So therefore, if your wireless is off, and you're not connected to anything, and the only internet source is this router, and you try and access something on the internet, and it works like that, see everybody, that's my email, that means that you have an internet connection. Now all you need to do is go to the computer and see that it can connect to it. Okay, here we are back in the kitchen. We have our wireless repeater set up, broadcasting. Let's see if our computer can detect it. Moving in, see number one on the list, Borg repeater. All right, let's try and click on that and connect. Now if you have to put in a password, you'll have to do it here. All right, it says we're connected. So now let's open our internet and see if we get a website. All right, we're up, up, and we have Google. Let's search for something. Let's search for DDWRT. What do we get? First on the list, unleash your router. Looks like we did it. Well, hopefully that'll make my partner happy. Well.
at least for today. So, looks like we have our wireless repeater. Now what you need to do is change the settings on the computer so they can sign on to the wireless repeater seamlessly. That'll really up the partner acceptance rating. Now, there's other things you can do with the DDWRT system. It sky's the limit. You can change any setting you want on the router. So, if you're inclined, play with it. Check out what other people have done to get the best signal, to get the best download rates, whatever. It really does unleash the power of your router. Now, if you do hit a pitfall along the way, go online, check the forums. There'll be information there of pitfalls other people have had. Trust me, if you've had a problem, other people have had the same problem and probably posted a solution. And hopefully that'll get you through any rough spots. Now, like I said earlier, this doesn't work for all routers, but a lot of the common routers are on that list and it's definitely worth a try. So that's it for this episode of This Old Nerd. I'm Rob Borghese reminding you to ask yourself, how's your tech life? Wow, this is so much easier. You're a genius.